Hiya guys, Spectre here. Um, just a, I think it's been rolling around in my head for a little bit. I um, just got accepted onto the YouTube Partner Program a couple of days ago. And it was um, basically an idea about the cost of memberships. Not just on YouTube, on other platforms as well. So, I just want to share something with you that I've been um, digging into a little bit. So, as you can see here, I've got some prices up. I've gone round. I've discounted the basic one off that and that. Because they're with ads. And I didn't even know they offered that. I, I wouldn't watch Netflix or Disney Plus with ads. Like in the middle of a film or a TV series. No, I just, I wouldn't. Um, so, into the cost of them and some of the programs and what they offer. So you've got £10.99. So, £11 basically. £17.99, £18. That's a bit steep. Not bad if you watch a lot of it, which we do. Watch a lot of films, and then I've put down some TV series that I like binge watch. Stranger Things, Mind Hunters, both great programs. You know, you've got triple, uh, you've got some A-list talent in actors and actresses across all these platforms. Some of these actors and actresses can pull in 10, 20 million an episode easily. They were pulling 20 million an episode on Friends back in the day, and um, Big Bang Theory not too long ago. Um, so if, if the actor, just one actor, is pulling in that as salary per episode, imagine what these productions cost. So you've got all the crew, you've got all the equipment on the set, the editing, all this that goes into it. You're going to be talking hundreds of millions, probably even in the billions, to make an entire TV series. If it's like one of the, well, example like Game of Thrones is smaller, in terms of episodes, you've got some that have got more episodes, like Big Bang Theory. But they're both going to be costing a lot. You might have 20 episodes for a Big Bang Theory season. You might only have like 7 or 8 for Game of Thrones. Or it might be 10, I think. Something like that. Uh, Disney Plus, 7 99 That's the cheapest of the bunch on that one. Or 10 99 for their premium version. So, same as the standard version for Netflix. Netflix is a bit more pricey. Um... But I think it just probably put out maybe a little bit more content. But Disney Plus, obviously, I put Star Wars series Mandalorian. I binge watched the fuck out of that. You've also got things like Loki with the Avengers stuff and all that on there. They're offering a lot of good stuff. Amazon Prime, eight ninety nine. I put Rings of Power maybe because it was a bit hit and miss. But apparently they are bringing out some million as well. So I'm not sure if that's going to be film format or TV series format. But they're bringing that out as well. Eight ninety nine. I think it's similar to the same price as like a tier 2 sub on Twitch. Probably a bit expensive to be fair for, for Twitch. But if that's what I'm going to try for Amazon. Because that for like supporting one channel on Twitch is a bit of a rip off to be fair. It should be that, the basic sub price, the $4.99. Um, HBO, Game of Thrones, enough said. A global phenomenon. Everyone fucking loved it. It was great. And um, they've got more coming out as well. I'm potentially going to go and do the prequel to where they were on the... Um, it on, um, is it Illyria or something, whatever it's called? The uh, the island they came from with all the bloody dragons. Now, this one's weird with HBO because I couldn't find it on the main page. But £8.4p, basically, but that's with ads, which is a bit excessive. And then without ads is £12.88. So they're the dearest, but probably because of what they're offering in terms of like Game of Thrones. You think how many A-list actors and actresses were in Game of Thrones? There was a lot. There was a lot. And some of those have gone from that TV show into, like, big A-list films now. Like, you know, your, your main films. Now, these are offering a lot of high-production content. A lot of really, really big programmes. Stranger Things, Mindhunters, Star Wars, Avengers-type stuff. Rings of Power, your Game of Thrones. I think HBO also did Supernatural, which... My boys, Supernatural. Dean, Sam, Castiel, my boys... Um, but th they're offering these amounts I've just got onto my YouTube partner program and I knew what I was going to charge before I'd even got on the on the program because I was going to charge the same amount for a B6 sub on Twitch that was always my intention which is cheaper than all of those and not too expensive but we're never going to make production videos as high quality as those You'd have to have their kind of money. You're talking hundreds of millions, potentially even billions. And you've got super rich people in there, the actors and actresses themselves. £4.99 is not an excessive price. I would pay that. I was subscribed to quite a few channels on Twitch until I made my move. 
permanently to YouTube, but I don't really watch Twitch that much anymore. It's only while I was there. And some of those channels don't stream anymore. Um, now, I would become memberships to some channels on YouTube, but at the moment, obviously, I've not got money coming in as a wage where I can afford it. But eventually, I probably will do. But while I was looking at some channels the other day, I noticed that some, while well, they might offer this price point, they offer some that are excessively higher. And it just got me thinking, you've really got to think about the content you're putting out and the content you're making. I don't mean the quantity of the content. Some people might only make one video a week. You make one video a week, that might be how your channel can operate and work. And it might take you an entire week to gather the information to make that particular video. But what you've got to ask yourself is, if you're charging the same prices as some of these, so the cheapest one is Disney Plus standard at 7 99 if you're charging even that, are you offering the same quality content as Disney Plus? And bear in mind, for a TV series, they'll put out one episode a week. So the same as if you're putting out one video a week. Me, I put out two videos a day. So I'm putting out 14 videos a week. I make up for it in the, the number of my content, the quantity. Um, I put out the highest quality that I can, but that's what I can. Me as an individual, I'm not a studio that's worth billions, or in the case of Disney, probably trillions. Um, but I wouldn't charge anything like this or this up here when I can't match their production quality. The highest production channel that I'm aware of on YouTube is probably Mr. Beast. And even his production quality doesn't match theirs. You know, the, the, these are... These are paying actor 20 million an episode. I doubt one of these videos costs 20 million. I mean, I could be wrong, I don't know. But that's just one cost, one person. That's not including all the crew, all the other big talent actors, all the editing, the bloody publishers, the directors, all that crap mounts up. Think of how much one episode alone is going to cost. Just one episode. And that's one a week. Now, one thing we can do as YouTubers to fill in the gap is you can put up episodes where this one minute episode comes out. You can put it on days where that's not. So if everyone's going to jump on TV and watch like Game of Thrones, you know for that hour that that's up, your content's fucking... You're not getting any content. Everybody's watching Game of Thrones for that fucking hour. So you can't compete with that in that time slot. So you need to either do it before that goes live or after... Or do it on different days. If you're doing like one video, like a lot of channels I watch do one video a day. So one video a day is good. I think that's for like easy production videos. That's something you probably should be aiming at. One video a day is a good amount to do. But when some are offering even like some cases twice this amount for a membership. You've got to look at something like this and think, is it worth it? For whatever it is you're offering for your perks. Now some offer like exclusive videos and things like that. And um, like even I've got like a Discord rank where you can get your spook rank on Discord. But mine's all included in this one price. I'm not going to try and blow smoke up someone's ass and sugarcoat it. I'm not going to charge them those prices when I can't match that production value. You can't. Nobody on YouTube can. Nobody on YouTube, probably even YouTube itself, can't match production value of these. And they don't make their own TV series, at least not aware of yet. If YouTube starts making some of their own TV series, that'd be quite cool. But they would have to charge, like, this sort of amount more than likely. But at the moment they don't. They just have their, like, their creator stuff that they do. And while they're not bad videos, they're not the production level of these. Of course not. They're not going to match between fucking Stranger Things. Mandalorian, not even close. So if, if you're charging the same as these, or more than these, you need to really think what it is you're offering. Because I guarantee there's not a person on YouTube offering the same as some of these series. And if you can realistically look at that and say, yeah, my content's not as good as those TV programs, then your membership shouldn't be that high. You should definitely lower it down and be a bit more realistic. You know, come back down to earth. Because if you're charging beyond these amounts, 
you've got to think, is that worth it? You might be able to put out more content than these studios can, because they make one really high production series or one episode per week. But they're charging that to cover the cost of all the productions and talent. And the quantity alone doesn't make up for what it costs them in their production. So you've really got to think, is the membership price that I'm charging worth that? If it's if it's a little bit more than this, say like five fifty, six pound, maybe even six fifty, that's probably okay. If it's lower, definitely going to be okay. Because four ninety nine to me is okay. I'd even probably pay five fifty for some channels, maybe six pound on the on the high side. But that's like what two pound less than this. It's starting to creep up there. But when someone charging double triple even more i think i saw one channel charging 89.99 a month that's more than this is for the goddamn year it's like what psychopath is paying char well charging that one and who the hell is going to buy that if someone's bought that bloody hell you've got some super supporters that have got really really loose wallets because god damn that that's like the price of my account no, it's actually cheaper than my council tax but it's um my cap stock's actually gone up. It's like 115. But 89.99. Jesus Christ. Yeah, some of these prices need to be significantly lowered. If you want multiple price points, that's completely fine. You know, just like these have got on here. There's nothing wrong with multiple price points. But think about your dearest one, and then make all the others cheaper. Don't don't have them at these prices. Because you're not matching this production value at all. You're not. If you think you're matching Stranger Things in production value, I'm telling you right now, you're just wrong. You are wrong. You're not matching any of these TV shows in production value. So don't charge their price when you can't match it. Be more realistic with your membership price. And you'll probably see yourself get more members. Because people will be happy to support you and support their YouTuber. And realistically what they can afford. So just... Look at it objectively, and I hope it's elevated some of your thinking, opened your eyes a little bit, and um, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you're new around here, please subscribe, and I will catch you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.